The Thai Johns will often say that when you meditate, you're getting practice in dying well. What does that mean, dying well? Think of the Buddha's image of what happens when you die. He says, just as a fire, as it goes from one house to the next, clings to the wind, feeds off the wind. In the same way a being, when it leaves its body, clings to craving as it goes to another body. So what are the skills you're going to need at that point? At the very least, you want to make sure that you go to a good place, which means that in addition to meditating, you've been creating good karma. So that the house next door is going to be a good house, or the houses next door will be good houses, because the wind can go in lots of different directions. But ideally, you want to get to the point where you don't have to go to a house. The fire can go out. And that requires that you look at what the Buddha said about who's going. He says, a being. Now, elsewhere he defines a being as wherever there's attachment, there's a being. Attachment to form, feelings, perceptions, thought fabrications, consciousness. Wherever there's attachment, there's going to be a being. You are a being. And by taking that apart, that's how you go beyond being a being. Because after all, once you're a being, you have to feed. Just as the fire feeds off the wind, you're going to be feeding off a craving, looking for a new place to land. As long as there's that narrative of you as a person, remember that the being is related to a becoming. You've got an identity in a world of experience. And as you have to leave this world, you're going to be looking for another world, as long as there's the narrative of you. You and your friends, you and your relatives, you and your enemies. As long as you're thinking in those terms, you've got your sights set on another house. And the way you make sure that you're not going to another house is to take those concepts apart, the world, your identity. And the Buddha says you do that not by trying to destroy your identity that you have now, but simply looking at the processes by which you create it and seeing that the raw material that it is really not worth holding on to. It's like seeing the house that you're living in is built out of frozen meat. And it's going to melt someday. It's going to be not a good place to live. So take apart the sense of being a being. Take apart the sense of being in a world. This is why the Buddha says when you're meditating, right concentration starts with right mindfulness. Staying focused on the body in and of itself, ardent, alert, and mindful, putting aside greed and distress with reference to the world. Same with feelings in and of themselves, mind states in and of themselves, mental qualities in and of themselves. These things don't have narratives. The body is just a body, made out of what? Made out of elements. And as the Buddha said, it's subject to abrasion, subject to dispersion. The body you're in, and the body you would go to, they're all going to fall apart. So is there anything there you want to hold on to? The same with feelings. The Buddha says to see feelings like a, those bubbles on water when rain falls, say, on a river. Little bubbles form on the surface of the water, and they disappear almost as soon as they're formed. Same goes with all the other, all the other aggregates. They're basically without essence, without substance. And you're going to create something out of these Things that have no essence or substance, mirages, banana trees, magic shows. As for the world, when you have this frame of reference of just body, feelings, mind, mental qualities in and of themselves, 
anything that would pull you back to the world, any greed, any distress around the world. Greed for what you'd like out of the world, distress out of what's happening in the world. The Buddha says, you put that aside. This, as long as you're thinking in terms of the world, then there's going to be an identity that forms in the world to change the world, to take advantage of the world, whatever. And that creates a new becoming. So as you focus here, the idea of world passes away. In fact, as you really get focused on arising and passing away here in the present moment, the Buddha says, when you things, see things arising, the idea of the non-existence of the world doesn't occur to you. When you see them passing away, the idea of the existence of the world doesn't occur to you. You're just there with stress arising and passing away. That has no narrative. That has no worldview. With no narrative, no worldview, there's no need for any identity as a, a being or as a self. That's the mind state you want to maintain. You can imagine as you're leaving this body, there'll be a strong sense of you leaving the body, you leaving this world. And the narrative will be a very sad narrative. So and so came to an untimely end. Even if you live to 120, they say an untimely end. And that's the, the recipe for creating another being that's going to ride craving to another house. So you've really got to get good at just seeing things arising, passing away, looking at things in terms of these frameworks. The four frames of reference, putting aside greed and distress with reference to the world. That's the recipe for getting the mind into right concentration. But it's also the recipe for learning how to see things in a way that goes beyond concentration. We're trying to take apart this craving for further becoming. And so we look at these events in the mind, events in the body that we would ordinarily use to create our narratives, create our worldviews. Just look at them as events. Try to get really good at that. Events that give rise to a sense of well-being, so you have a positive attitude towards these things. If you try to do this without concentration, it gets really dry really fast and can be very disorienting. I once knew a Vipassana teacher asked me, what do you do with people who attain stream entry and they find it disorienting? And I said, well, I'll tell them to begin with, that's not stream entry. Because with stream entry, you see the deathless, and that's as grounding as you can get. So just simply watching things arising and passing away doesn't get this disorienting. You want to learn how to steer this arising and passing away into a good state of concentration. Learn how to get at home with the concentration. Doing enough work so it gives rise to a sense of well-being. And focusing on the work enough so you can keep at it. Not so much that you don't appreciate the sense of well-being. But you don't want to focus so much on the sense of well-being that you forget your work. After all, mindfulness as a governing principle is not just watching things arise and pass away. If something is skillful and it's not there yet, you try to give rise to it. If it's already as skillful, you try to maintain it. This is your work. But it's in the course of doing the work that you see things on the level of having no narrative and no worldview. And that's the level you want to get used to. That way you won't have a being that latches onto craving. You see the craving, you see it go, but you don't go with it. And this is how the meditation prepares you helps you develop the skills you're going to need at that point where you don't want a narrative, 
and you don't want a worldview. So the mind can gain unbinding, can be, really be released. Now the idea of not being a being may sound like self-annihilation, but there is something that doesn't end. They describe the, the passing away of an arahant as all that is experienced or felt, not being relished, grows cold right here. That all refers to the six sense spheres. But the consciousness without surface, that's not known through the six sense spheres, it's something apart. That doesn't end. And to know that is the greatest happiness. So this goes against a lot of our attitudes. In order to find happiness, we have to create a sense of self in a, in a particular world where the object that we want to find is going to be found. And this we cling so hard to this idea of being a being and whatever raw materials that we need to keep that idea going. So we've got to learn how to think in other ways. That's by not taking on the identity of a being that you actually will find true happiness. It's by not feeding that you find true happiness. It goes against our normal orientation, which is one of the reasons why the practice of the Dharma begins with generosity. Instead of taking in, you give out. You reverse the direction. So when the time comes, you say that at the final stages of breath meditation, you focus on inconstancy, you focus on dispassion, you focus on cessation. You would think it all stops there, but no, there's one more step. You focus on relinquishment. The word for relinquishment actually means giving back. All these things you've laid claim to, all these narratives and everything, using the raw material of the aggregates of the six spheres that you've commandeered for you or yours, you give it back. In doing so, you find something a lot better. That doesn't require that you cling or take at all. This is maybe what Bodun meant when he said that the things of the world come in pairs, but Dharma practice is one thing clear through. giving back all the way.